joining us uh, here. Uh, he's a senior trader at TNT Group out in Chicago. Brian, forgive me if I've mispronounced that. He actively trades stocks, commodities, and currencies. And then out in Boston, we have Michael Vogelzane, President and Chief Operating Officer of Boston Advisors, an independent investment firm with about $1.6 billion in uh, assets under management. Brian, did I say your name right or did I get it wrong? You said it exactly right. Thank you. All right. Good to know. Hey, what do you make of the trade today? Very quiet trade, as Julie's been pointing out. Yeah, we've been tracking these planes, uh, these UPS planes, these FedEx planes, and this UAE plane. Um, what do you make of that? Why do you think we're seeing that? Is it just that we're so focused on next week? No, you know, it's 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 really bothersome. The, the problem that we have in this market right now is everything's so automated that I don't think the automated systems really care about the news at all. You can watch it in the market. They just don't really react to it. They don't really care about it. As a trader, we you know, we, we traded it very cautiously today. We tried to trade the short side. Nothing would really move. You know, some people have said, yeah, you know, we're waiting for next week for the QE, but I, I can't believe it. I can't believe we didn't get a reaction out of this market at all. You want to throw terrorism into this market? It seems like a death trap to me. I wouldn't want to be long it. Hey, Brian, I I'm curious, though. I mean, even though you say that, that you wouldn't want to be long on this, I mean, it seems as though, from what we've been reporting, that uh, these didn't necessarily pose an imminent threat, but still you think it, it would be enough to, to at least be a little more cautious here than the market exhibited. Oh. Yeah, I mean, you got a pot full of everything that's really bad. I mean, we just came out with GDT, GDP today, which came out expected, but it's still at 2%. That's terrible. Now you throw this in there, which is an Al-Qaeda, obviously some sort of plot or plan. You can't, you can't throw this into the market right now and not get a reaction. It's very scary that we didn't even get a reaction. To us as traders sitting in front of the screens, it actually makes us really nervous. Michael, let me ask you about uh, GDP. I mean, um, is it that terrible? 2% obviously is in line with expectations. Still, we had household purchases rising 2.6%. That was better than expected. And the best quarter since the recovery began in June of 2009. I mean, is it, uh, as one of our guests said earlier, more of a sigh of relief kind of uh, report? No, it's, I, I, would, I would describe it as the definition of muddle. You know, I mean, we're just muddling through here. I mean, it's, you know, if you look back at previous recoveries after, after significant recessions, you've had above trend uh, GDP growth for, for probably a year and a half. So far, we've really been uh, just completely anemic and, and more of the same here. I think it probably pushes off the worries about a double dip a little bit, uh, but it's certainly not anything to really embrace here, embrace, embrace and, and get real excited about. You know, I mean, in terms of the market today, it's the same issue as Brian said. You know, look, we're, we're, walk, we're looking at next week, and, and um, it's pretty tough to get aggressive either side until you see what happened next week. Let me ask you about uh, next week, because you are, I'm sure, like everyone else, expecting the Fed to come out with some sort of quantitative easing to print some money and buy assets. That obviously, or you'd expect that to drive the dollar down and drive uh, the, the price of risk assets up as people uh, soak them that, that cheap, free money into other things. I mean... Why would you be selling risk assets as you are and buying the dollar ahead of this? Oh, it's pretty easy. I mean, this is, uh, this is buy the rumor, sell the news, right? I mean, we've had a huge S September and October, as you guys pointed out. We've had two really, really solid months when most people are always, you know, very fearful of September and October. We've been, we've been aggressively positioned in our portfolios, and it's time to take some of the risk off. We think that, that we could very well get a little bit of a, a um, uh, I guess a disappointment. I'm not even sure which would be more of a disappointment, heavy QE2 or not. But um, I, I think there's a little more risk in the market here, mostly from a, mostly from a sentiment perspective. People have been looking forward to this. I think we've got the elections baked in already. I think we, we, the market is looking at, at, at sort of, um, you know, decent gains and probably, a, probably a takeover of the House by the Republicans and some decent gains in the, uh, uh, in the Senate. And you know, that's pretty much where we're going to be. So I, I think a lot of the news is already baked in, and, and, and uh, given some of the huge spikes in prices we've seen, we've decided to back off a bit. Hey, Brian, it's Julie. Uh, do you think that we are going to start to see a turn here in the bond market? I mean, if you look back over the week, we had some comments, pretty aggressive comments from Bill Gross. We had, of course, the negative yield tips auction. Do you think the tide is turning a little bit in that market? You know, it is. We, you know, we tried to play the short side all week, but it was really, really tough. You know, the problem is, is throughout this week, as you get a weak dollar, that's what's driving the bond market higher. So we kind of had the turnaround of the dollar higher through midweek, actually through yesterday, and then it just collapsed yesterday going into today, and all of a sudden you got the bond market kind of rallied back. Now you throw into this terrorist stuff into it and all these packages, we caught a bond rally off of that too, so you kind of got that flight, you know, to quality, kind of a fear bit into it is what we felt. So you throw that into it, it's really tough. 
I like the short side personally because I just think the government's buying them up, and once they're done buying or they can't buy anymore, I think we're just going to collapse. And if you throw inflation into this market, wow, it's, it's going to collapse really hard. You know, Brian, you're scaring me a little bit. So, you know, I'm looking at the major equity averages. We're flat pretty much on the S&P and the Dow for the week. We're up about 1% on the NASDAQ, and yet the VIX is up about 12% for the week uh, overall. I mean, what's going to happen next week? Are, are traders, are investors, in your view, so nervous that should we get any surprises, you know, take your pick from the Fed, from those elections, from non-farm payrolls that we could see a significant move next week? Yeah, I mean, that's that's kind of what I think everybody's playing right now. You know, I've talked to a lot of traders. I think a lot of guys are just kind of going to take it easy until Wednesday and not even trade. So you might have had a lot of guys not even be here today. Um, here's our thing, $500 billion to a trillion, that's what we're looking for. You get anything below a trillion, I don't think the market's really going to budge much, you know, unless you get above that trillion mark. So that's going to throw in the volatility. Goldman Sachs put out a report today that they're expecting $500 billion. Well, we're looking at basically 100 billion per percentage point. So if we get a trillion, we're already priced in. You know, yeah. anything below that, I think we can drop. Uh, Michael, I mean, do you agree? You say buy the rumor, sell the news, and that's exactly what I think a lot of people have been thinking here. So, uh, is there a rumor that you need to that you need to meet a target you need to hit? Well, Brian and I probably have a little different time frames when we invest for our clients or for ourselves. So it's it's a little tough to square those sometimes, but. Yeah, I mean, I think this is a classic setup for that. Um, you know, it, this is this is very um, circular logic here, right? I mean, you, you had you have all of the market participants talking about what we expect the Fed to be doing uh, next week, and then all of a sudden the Fed comes out and says, well, "Hey, you know," sends out a questionnaire and says, "Hey, what do you guys think? What do you think we should do?" So suddenly you get this really weird positioning where, where guys in our business are kind of looking at it and going, "Well, I thought you guys knew what you were going to do," and then are we going to inform you what we should? So it, it's a very odd thing, and and I think. Um, we're, we're sort of in that trap right now, and everybody's kind of looking at each other around the room and saying, what do you think is right, right? I mean, Brian, you got $500 billion to a trillion? Okay, that's a reasonable number, but, you know, I, I'm, not, I'm not sure that if, uh, that if any, you know, what, what happens if they don't do any QE2 next week? What happens? Um, is that a good be thing ugly. or a bad thing for the market? Well, but that's telling you that the economy's strong. I mean, you might have a short-term ugly reaction, but it also tells you that the economy is stronger than the Fed okay. thinks. And, and why do we need to? Why do we need to, to give more stimulus? All right, listen, we could go on for a while, but guys, we gotta we gotta break in because we've got to uh, wrap this up. We'll put them on the phone with each other, <laughs> and they can go on there a little bit. Right. Michael Fogel saying, uh, thank you so much for joining us from Boston Advisors, and Brian Tahako there from Chicago.